Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 136. Uh, my name is Jason Ruppelding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. As always, I'm here with Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. And today is September 13th, 2023. The 11th month window is August 13th, 2024. And your seventh month window is April 13th, 2024. Um, again, buy and sell. You can find us buy and sell dvc.com and you can find dvc rental at dvc rental.com. Remember the dash to save the cash. Now, on the buy and sell side of things, I want to talk about something today called Moonlight Magic. Now, Moonlight Magic, Moonlight Magic, how, how many? Wait, do you, do you know off the top of your head how many years this has been around? Because I do not. But, I don't know off the top of my head. But now. Um, in 2023, five years, four years. Okay. Moon like magic is offered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different nights at some different parks and one at Disney California adventure park. Um, but this is one of the perks that you only get if you buy directly from Disney, um, under their qualifications, whether you bought, you know, you could have bought resale in 2011 and you would have qualifications. You could have bought 150 points this year from Disney and you would have the blue card membership. But basically, Moonlight Magic, if you have a reservation um, for the nights for when the Moonlight Magic is happening, you are able to try and book your Moonlight Magic event if i have that correctly that's right so <laughs> now keyword is try right right i do feel like because i i've participated in the moonlight magic thanks to you back in uh i believe it was 2020 maybe and uh, <laughs> i mean it was a it was a fun experience it was at magic kingdom and uh, you know they and they, you know they have uh, ice cream and you know it's it's a it's a very fun experience you know it's, it's um but it's definitely like if you have the feeling that oh I'm gonna go there and it's only DVC members and there's gonna be like you know twenty people in the park I mean it is still pretty full yes yeah, I mean uh, it's still pretty full but um but now I feel like Moonlight Magic has become impossible to get into. And I just want to bring it up because if if you're one of those people that's on the fence of, well, I want to buy directly from Disney because I want to have Moonlight Magic, to me, I mean, it's just, it's too big of a, a roll of the dice because number one, you have to be staying when the Moonlight Magic event's going on. And then you have to be able to be one of the chosen few that's able to secure your Thing for the event because what's happening uh, you know i'm in all these different facebook groups for disney vacation club and when something happens where they're you know it's the day has come for someone to book moonlight magic you majority of the posts are uh, people complaining that they couldn't get in and then you will have you know one or two people that say this is you know they're done with dvc i'm selling my dvc because I was not able to get Moonlight Magic again. So to me, the system, it has to change to where, to me, it, if you've been at Moonlight Magic before and, you, and you've never been, then you get a priority over the people that have been or something because this, it's like they're dangling the carrot in front of these people, but now they're not even able to obtain the carrot ever. Yeah, it, it used so, to be much easier to get into. I mean, when it, when it first started out, I mean, we never didn't get in. I mean, and a lot of times we get in multiple times. We have multiple memberships. So a lot of times we get in and we book, you know, four tickets and then we get four more. So I, I could bring Jason or I could bring Ty and his family. You, know, you, you I, was, I was able to get in multiple times. And then the last several times I've tried to get in, we've gotten completely skunked. I mean, like even when we were, we happened to have a night staying on property and try to get in, still couldn't get in that way. And then, you know, a couple of days later, they'll open it up to people who are not staying on property with a small amount of tickets. I think one of them even like, you know, you're, you're assigned a number, you know, you, you go in online and at whatever, 11 a.m., it'll generate a random number and that's what your queue is in the line. And sometimes you're 7,000 
And this time, I think we were like 300. I'm like, oh yeah, we're getting in. We were 300th in line and still didn't get in. So, I mean, it, it's just, it's gotten much, much harder. It's, it's been a huge pain. It's one of those things that the parties are okay. There's not much else going on. I mean, you know, you, you, the, the crowds will be a little bit lower. They may have a couple of meet and greets with some different characters that aren't normally there. And normally there's like an hour line for these meet and greets or you'll get some snacks or some sort of food, but it, it's never anything that you should judge buying DVC. Yeah, it's not life this is the, Yeah, in the back of the yeah. mind going, I need to go to these parties. If you go to one, you'll probably be like, that was okay, you know. Hey, yeah, maybe it's cool if I'll go again sometime for free, but you would never sit there and say, listen, I'm not buying resale. You know, I really want to get to these parties. I need a direct membership, so that way I'm, I'm guaranteed to get in, because even if you got direct membership, you know, the, the chances of you getting in are actually relatively low right now. It doesn't make it to the big board checklist. No. If you never check it off that you make it to a Moonlight Magic, you're going to be okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Trust me, I, I've, I've checked it off. I, I've been to five or six parties. They're, they're Honestly, they're okay at best. I mean, not complaining. Anything Disney's giving away for, you know, free is cool. That, that's great that they offer this stuff. But it's not one of those things that, you know, you, you're really missing out on that you didn't get to go to a Moonlight Magic party. But do you agree that they need to somehow revamp it to make it well, somehow? Well, that would hurt me because I've been there before. But, I, but I mean, it, it makes sense. It, ma it makes either sense. Either that, or can you can you just post it like, "Hey, we're going to have an event, and the chance of you getting in is two percent or something like?" <laughs> because it's like, I mean, because if, if you're a family, and uh, you know, we both have kids, like. It's like, I'm sure you don't even mention it to your kids because the chance no. of you getting in is slim to none, so you don't want to get them excited for it. No, you do not. So, <laughs> so these families, you can't, definitely, I wouldn't mention it to your kids because you may not, you're probably not going to get in. Yeah, there's a decent so, chance you're not getting in. So I guess, I guess, I just want to make sure the message is out there that it's probably, you're probably not getting in. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. Like, don't buy direct based on this because you will be, so You'll be really highly upset. disappointed. <laughs> yeah, if you sit there and you go, you know, I, I paid twice as much as resale. It cost me an extra ten thousand dollars to have these perks. You know, you're not guaranteed this perk. And tr truthfully, even even if you do get in, it's you know, it, it's worth a hundred bucks for your family to go. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's not a huge thing. So you, you definitely do not want to judge how you purchase your DVC based on Moonlight Magic. And if you guys know, if anybody in the comments knows a way that Disney could improve the Moonlight Magic to make it, I don't know what the, you know, the right term is, more fair or just to be up front, more upfront about what your chances are, you know, let us know. Because, I mean, I would like to see improvements on it at this point because it gets a little, the day of the booking, I mean, the, you know, the internet's a wild. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, and the thing is, there, there's ways to try to hedge yourself a little bit. Like, uh, a lot of people do this, and I may have done this as well, is that you'll have multiple computers going at the same time. You know, there's a lot of people who've got, you know, the three phones out and four computers, and they're all trying to get in at the same time. And I mean, I, we've done similar stuff, you know, like when we tried to get in recently, like this past year, I've had my laptop going, my wife's laptop going, a couple different browsers on there, tried it on our phone as well, and you still can't get in. Yeah, I mean, the person that, when it just happened recently, I. I swear the person said they have like 14 devices. I believe it. And I'm like, yeah. 14 devices? Like, it's think about it. that, that, that's, what, that's what you have to do to try to get into this. You have to have 14 devices. Everybody at once is, is all a group effort. It's, it's not something that's easy. It's not something that's relaxing. It's, it's, <laughs> it's stressful. It's and it's really not relaxing. This, you know, you, you've got all these devices going, waiting for it to hit, and then you're stressing, and the countdown starts going, and you're hoping that you're going to make it. It's, and your emotions are going oh, like yeah, this. It's, oh, I, I see it every time on Facebook. People are so angry when they don't get in. You know, it's I, I sat there waiting for three hours, and I got down to, you know, there, there was I was 20 people ahead of me, and that said, we're pausing the line, and then everything was sold out. You know, it happens all the time. We've been there where we've been only a few away, and then they've paused it. And then you don't make it. It's I mean, again. I, I've tried th probably three times, four times so far this year. Haven't gotten in once. So, so it's, I mean, it's, it's not it's, something that's guaranteed by far. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's one of those. I mean, I tried to think of something that I own or I'm a member of where there's a perk, but you've never gotten a chance to use <laughs> the perk. You know, 
Like, there's members out there. You got a perk, but it's kind of a lottery system to actually benefit from it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I, like, got a, I got a Costco card. I got, I got a discount on vacations, but eh, only sometimes. Yeah. It's, so it's kind of wild, you know, because there's members out there that are going to never be able to use the perk, even though they want to use the perk. So is it then called a perk? I yeah, and, and you know, honestly, you know, I, I live locally, so I can go to any of these. So it makes sense that, I, you know, I'll try this three times a year, four times a year. You know, odds are if you're a regular family and you're traveling down here once, twice a year, odds are the parties aren't going to line up with your vacations anyway. And even if they do, it's still nowhere near guaranteed that you're going to be able to go to these parties. So to, to sit there and judge buying direct, hoping that your vacation lines up and the stars align and you all get in, you know, just so you can go to a party that starts at, you know, 10 o'clock at night as well. It goes like 10 to 1 in the morning. That's another thing is that they're all super late at night. You know, you got little kids, you know, you don't want to be going to a park and a party starting from 10 to 1. Your kids are going to be exhausted. You're going to be exhausted. <laughs> it just it it's, doesn't make a ton of sense to me. So I just wanted to mention, I don't think we've even mentioned it before, but um, mm -hmm. so now we're on to the food review. Come here, I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly. So for today's food review. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I am I am at Vero Beach. So, yeah, we didn't make it very long without mentioning Vero Beach, like we said we were going to. I, I think Vero Beach has been mentioned in every episode we've done since then. I got the key lime pie Dole Whip at Vero Beach for four ninety nine. Now, I, apparently they do have the key lime Dole Whip as well in the, in the parks. I've been told. I've seen them online. Uh, if you look at the picture that I had on there, it was a terrible picture. The, the person who made the, the the Dole Whip did not do a very good job. The you know, other Dole Whips like. My kids also had a regular one over there. You know, it's the you know big, swirled up, beautiful, nice one. This one was falling over. Maybe it was their first day making Dole Whips. I don't know. So the picture was ugly, but it was it was it was a very good Dole Whip. Um, I'm not a huge fan of pineapple, so I'm not a real Dole Whip guy. But key lime pie, I was absolutely happy with. Um, so what they do is they take some little like graham crack, crunched up, very, very small graham cracker crumbles and they put it in the bottom of the cup. Then they put the Dole Whip on and then they put some more of the graham cracker on top. I really wish it would have had a little more graham cracker on it. But overall, it was your typical key lime pie. You had the tanginess, you know, the sourness to it, plus the sweetness. I would absolutely get this again. I give it an 8.1 on a, on a hot day. We were sitting around the pool at Vero and it was hot there. It, that, that, that Dole Whip was wonderful. So, so the big question of the day is, because this is not Magic Kingdom, this is Vero Beach. Vero Beach. How long of a wait time was it when you said, I want to order this until you got it? Well, let's see. What happened was I walked into the market and I walked right up to the register and I said, can I please have two, two drinks? You know, they have this little soda machines there. So can I please just get two cups Oh, you have Dole Whip, can I get one of those too? And overall, the whole process took about uh, one minute. <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, I love it. Never any lines, walked right up. I didn't, I didn't even know it was there. I was like, give me drinks. Hey, lemon, key lime pie Dole Whip. I'll take one of those too, please, thank you. Super, super fast, nice and easy as always. Love it, that's what I like to hear. And now we're on to the DVC dash rental side of things. So actually, I had mentioned it Previously, did I mention it to, did I mention it today at all? I don't. I, don't, I, don't I, I did not. I mentioned previous episodes about like especially this was with the Edcott group. <laughs> he keeps getting mentioned a lot here. With uh, I want to talk about traveling with large groups because we've spent a lot of time with them in the past recently, and we're going to be spending time with them again. I want to give just some advice for people tra traveling with large groups. Wait, can I ask a question real quick? Why yes. you mentioned Edcott? Is this is this closed? Like, can people still get into this group, or is this closed? Oh, it's open. People can oh, still try to get into this group. Yes. Wait, do do you want to say on YouTube like how they can get into the group, or is the ceremony something that's private? I mean, how they get in? <laughs> it's typically a smaller group, uh, but you go to Edcott. It's the Experimental Dubs Community of Tomorrow. That's what EDCOT stands for. It's like EPCOT, but with a D for dubs. It's the WW -Dub Review. And it's it's one of my favorite groups because it's a really, really good small community of people. And everybody's, it's all family and everybody's become friends and they help out each other. And we've done, you know, there's been a lot of stuff with um, recently some people have gotten sick and they've done 
donations and charity events. I mean, it's like the nicest group of people you can find. And Malik, like, he, he asked you like 50 Disney questions. You have to get a certain score to get into the group, right? Yes, pretty much so. <laughs> I actually have to record with Malik tomorrow, so we will see. But yeah, it's it's a great group, and I'm picturing walking with these groups and stuff. You know, there's some helpful some tips here. Okay, I saying, sorry, I got you on track there. So now we're right. back to the DVC right now. Sorry, we're back on track. Traveling with large groups. So don't be afraid to split up. Don't feel that everybody has to go on do the same exact thing together. Everybody's gonna be tired at different times, or different kids are gonna want different things. So. It's okay to split up. Don't feel guilty. Nobody should get mad if somebody says, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to split off for an hour and take my kid on this ride or whatever. Just don't be afraid to split up. Time at the resorts can be just as good as in the parks. Some of the best time we had was hanging out in the lobby of Animal Kingdom Jumbo House and everybody had pins and they were doing pin trading. And all the families were just sitting around the table and they had their pins out and all the kids are interacting and having fun. And I mean... Compared to walk around in the heat and everybody's hot and tired and cranky, that, I think for a lot of people in our group, that's probably going to be the, one of the main things they remember is doing the pin trading all together because everybody was comfortable. It was at, you know, you know, the air conditioning. Everybody was having a good time. It was super, super fun. So remember, the resorts could be better than what you would even expect. You know, you're thinking of the parks. Everybody's thinking of the rides they could do together. Look for the little things sometimes. Uh, yeah, the, 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 with the, with the, with the, um, pin trading, like the, the pool, arcade, lobby was some of the most fun that we had. We did, went in the pool together. Everybody went, we got pe ordered pizzas and we just sat around the pool area. Everybody's hanging out and relaxing. And that, that's some of the most fun I had was just hanging out with the people, not rushing from ride to ride, trying to figure out where you want to be, what pass you know you have, hanging out with the people. Um, look, for, Make sure you pick rides that can accommodate large groups of people. Um, Kilimanjaro Safari was great because we had almost a whole truck to ourselves in, at one of the days. Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, the larger larger rides. Like trying to do stuff where everybody can be together. Did you guys ever like, fill up every car in the Barnstormer? Or we didn't. No, we we we, we did not do the Barnstormer. <laughs> For those who are just joining us, that's Jason's favorite ride. So I'm losing my voice a little bit. Sorry, but yeah, we just look for rides rides that can accommodate a large amount of people. Um, make sure you take into consideration, I mentioned earlier, like different age groups and downtime. If you're with some older people, they may be going a little bit slower. The, the kids could be running around like crazy or the kids could be crashing faster than some of the adults because they're getting tired. You know, we had, for, we had people probably in the 60s down to, you know, kids that are in, you know, strollers that are only three or four. So, I mean, th there's a large range there. You have to try to accommodate everybody as best as you can. And if, if you're able to maybe even consider splitting up into groups with similar ages, like a lot of times, we've done this a couple, couple different trips now. Sometimes like the girls, some of the girls would go off together. A couple of the moms and the daughters would go off and they did Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique together where some of the husbands and the old, older boys would then go and do, you know, one of the roller coasters together. Not that, not that the girls don't like roller coasters, but just like the guys would do their things and the girls would do their things. And the girls would actually yeah, went, got their hair done and then went to Cinderella's Royal Table. And the guys went over and they were spent the day, you know, hanging out in Star Wars land, doing all the Star Wars stuff and building droids. And, you know, just feel free to split up a little bit. Have different ages. If it's different, split up with different sexes. If you got a bunch of the girls that want to do something special together, it's okay to split up. You don't have to be congregating with a giant group of 60 people together all at once. So feel free to split up, but take your time, enjoy it, and enjoy the smaller things because that's probably the stuff you're going to remember the most. Not, not the, you know, a specific ride on, you know, we went on Dinosaur. You know, you, you went on a ride, but it's, it's the interaction with the different kids and the different parents and that, that type of stuff is the stuff you're going to remember on your vacations. And like when you stayed at the Vero Beach at the end of July and August, <laughs> like you mentioned here, don't be afraid to split up. But that was just your family of four, right? Correct. That's my family but, of four. But, uh, I try to split up as much as I can from them anyway. But when you're there, oh. just, do you, are you guys, is it is it split up there even though it's a family of four? Sometimes, or, yes. Yeah. Like my... my, my my one, my youngest one would get along great with your family. Like he's always ready to go. He's like, let's go play bi billiards. Let's go mini golfing. Let's go do this. And I'm like, I'm in relaxing mode. <laughs> so a couple times, like my wife and my two boys went and played mini golf together while I just sat and relaxed. And then I played pool with my youngest, 
billiards once with my youngest one as well. But <clears throat> sometimes you still got to relax because not, not everybody wants to do the same things. Like a lot of times I'll take my youngest one and I'll go in the ocean with him. Not this time, but I'll go in the ocean with him. Where my older one doesn't like the ocean as much, he'd be much happier in the pool. So my wife will be with him in the pool and I'll take my little guy and we'll go in the ocean. So it's like sometimes you got to split up as well. Yeah, because, I mean, we split up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, like my kids think like Vero Beach is like a cruise, but obviously we're not on a cruise. But they like it because they're like it has all the activities of a cruise. Like you go on a cruise and you have a pool and you have a beach. Obviously, you don't have the food and everything in the shows, but they they feel like it's because everything's right there. So like, if, if, you know, one kid will be doing all these different pool activities in the pool games. My wife will be by the pool. I might be down boogie boarding and my son's up in the room, you know, because he's doing something with his friends online or something. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, even because I, I mean, you said don't be afraid to split up. I mean, even families of four, you know, split up a little bit. Because it's not everyone's always doing the exact same thing. I hate to say it, we keep talking about Vero, but again, one of the great things about Vero is you're. I never thought of it that it is kind of like a cruise that this they're splitting up. And sometimes my that's exactly what happens is that my one son will go back to the room, and he wants to be on his phone for a little bit, chat with his friends, whatever. And it's such a small resort, and it's enclosed, and you feel safe. I don't mind sending my kids back to the room by themselves. Kind of like on a cruise ship, I let them go and I let them do their stuff. And you know, my wife and I are you know in a watching a show somewhere, and my oldest one is, I, he's watching videos, or he, you know, he's, he's with a couple friends, and my, my youngest one's in the kids' club, and then they leave, and they go and get pizza. I don't know where they are all the time, but the, everybody has split up, and everybody's having a good time, and we all know to meet back at certain places for specific things, and everybody kind of does their thing. Yeah, I mean, really, and then, yeah. So, yeah, like, Vero Beach is like, because you don't really get to do that, like, if you're staying at the Polynesian, you don't yeah. get the same, you know, yeah. same thing. Sorry. So anyway, traveling with large groups of people. So when you say large group, what is the number on the people when you, does it, that mean, are we talking, <coughs> are we talking 40? Are we talking more than 40? Overall, this group was probably 40-ish people. Whoa. A lot of times. That we, is a large d- d- group. You know, that was everybody together, but a lot of times people were at different parks and doing different things at different times. For upcoming cruise next year, I think we're probably 60 plus people. That's amazing. You should get in on that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Edcott people. I'm, by, I, I'm a little... It's a lot of people. That's a lot <laughs> I think, of people. I think like, that's, that's a, a lot of people, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's a lot of people. I'm just, I'm just, I'm really just absorbing that information. <laughs> 60 people. Yeah. And that's not even. That's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, but it's a lot of people. That's a lot. It's interesting. It's, like, it's a lot of different personalities and different kids and different personalities. It's, it's, everybody always has a really good time pretty much. I'm sure there's probably a, sure a little with, drama or something. I mean, I'm sure you're going on one of the huge ships again. So you're talking 4,000 other people yeah. or however. You something know. like that, yeah. So, yeah. wow. That's a. That's an experience already. I'm already getting anxious for that. Getting yeah, nervous <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. And uh, come back and see us and leave us any comments. Yeah, I've mentioned, you mentioned that in a while. Yeah, Please leave comments on here. We love seeing your comments. We love replying to you. As long as you're being nice and not making fun of us. Well, I really would love comments. On Vero Beach. Say, no, no. If you say, if you left a comment said, member since whatever and never wow. been to Moonlight Magic, or member since whatever, been twice. Member since, you know, like, I would love to see the stats on that, because... Or, how, or if you recall, how often you've tried to get into Moonlight Magic and how often you were successful? Because again, for, for first couple of years, I was like probably six for six, and then it's just, it's been so much tougher to get into, so. Yeah, write, write down the statistics, that'd be cool to, to hear. Please let us know. Thank Thanks. you so much. See you next week.